Hi guys, so um, I just wanted to talk about some adventures I've had recently with uh, Tesla wall connectors uh, for charging your electric vehicle. Um, I have a Polestar 2 on order uh, and that requires a standard non-Tesla uh, char wall charger. Um, I was looking around and I honestly don't even remember how I got on it, but um, I wanted to figure out if I could make a Tesla wall connector um, work with uh, a J1772 standard um, charging cord. Um, so I bought a cord from uh, a company called Open EVSE, and they actually make whole kits for um, making uh, wall connectors. Um, the cord has uh, two hots and a ground, so those are pretty straightforward. Um, and then one purple cable. This is the control pilot. Uh, this is what is used to kind of uh, send control signals between the car and the uh, wall connector. Um, it it, require, it allows uh, the wall, con wall connector to advertise like how much current's available and uh, just communicate with the car. Uh, so this is what it looks like uh, from the factory. Um, the Tesla cords are a little bit different. You can see it's got the two hots. It's got the ground, and then it's got this extra cable that has uh, four different colors on it. It's got orange, purple, uh, blue, and white. And I think if you have a Gen 2 uh, charger, uh, th these are actually black or brown instead of white. Um, but this is a special kind of Molex connector. Um, if you have the Gen 2 charger, I think it's uh, just some screw terminals, which are a lot easier to work with. Uh, so what I did is I went and found this connector online uh, so that I could uh, do some splicing and try to work around this extra cable um, without destroying my Tesla uh, Tesla charging cable so I could swap it back later if I wanted to. So I found this online. Um, it's a Molex part. It's a uh, 145-132-0400. Um, so I can use one of these to kind of splice on and that will uh, keep me from destroying my OEM Tesla cable. Um, so back to my uh, open EVSE uh, standard charge cord. Uh, like I said, it just has the one purple. So I had to work out um, actually how to uh, wire everything up properly. Seeing as how we only have the purple, uh, what to do with these other pins. So, um, start with a simple one here. So the orange actually is called the proximity. Um, that's usually not even connected to the, uh, to the wall connector. Uh, so I just terminated that. Um, Tesla, I guess, uses it for something, but it doesn't seem to be necessary. Um, the blue uh, wire is a 3.3 volts DC, and Tesla uses that uh, for uh, powering the, there are, there's a circuit inside the actual connector on the handle. Uh, we don't need that for our standard connector either. So we just go ahead and uh, terminate that. Where it got tricky was uh, this white. And again, on the Gen 2 chargers, I think that's uh, black or brown or something. But this actually goes to a thermistor. And Tesla, they, um, I guess they're taking the temperature of the actual charging handle and just shut it off if, if it goes over temperature. And that's a feature that's not really standard in um, in the J1772 spec. Um, so it's not really needed. So what I did here is I just replaced the thermistor with a 10K resistor uh, straight to ground. And that kind of fools the, um, the wall connector into thinking that uh, the temperature is fine. There's nothing to worry about. So it just kind of defeats that uh, extra um, check that Tesla has that's non-standard. Uh, the purple wire is the um, is the control pilot and that just wires straight on through. So if you imagine that this is the um, connector we have there, these are all black but you'd have orange, purple, blue, and white and you wire them up like you see here. Um, so that's more or less what I've done here. Um, I've got this one just terminated this one terminated. This one goes to purple. This one goes to a 10K resistor and then straight to our ground here. Um, 
Now I've done something a little bit extra here, uh, just again because uh, you know I get curious and I wonder if I can do something. Um, so I've added a, an actual toggle switch here on the side, and on one end it goes to ground, and the other end goes to our proximity. And here I've got uh, got a Zener diode in here and a regular diode in here. And what this does, in theory, is it emulates the um, the control signal that the car would give to the wall connector to say it's there and it's connected. So it pretends that the car is connected. Uh, and I'll go into why I want to do that later. Um, but just to kind of give an overview. So we have the white, same way we defeat the uh, thermistor. Uh, the blue and the orange are, are terminated. And then we have this purple, but it, um, in parallel, we've added this circuit here. We got a Zener diode, uh, a regular diode, and a switch. What that does is it pulls the voltage down here to nine volts, and that tells the wall connector that there's actually a car connected. Um, so that's tricky, I guess. Um, going into why we do that, uh, basically, when you plug this into the car, um, it doesn't do anything for about 10 seconds. And I, my guess is what's happening is that uh, Tesla has some extra communication it's trying to do with the car, um, it's trying to establish. And my car doesn't recognize what it's doing. It just sees that there's no power. And so it goes into a fault mode, but only for about 10 seconds. And then it starts charging. So there's this little hiccup where uh, my car is expecting power and this thing isn't sending power. And then after about 10 seconds, it gives up and says, okay, you can have the power. Uh, and so I'm hoping that by pretending or tricking this thing into thinking a car is connected, it will uh, get over that uh, check faster and basically be ready to charge at any time. Um, so I'm gonna try that out and we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah. Let's go check it out. So just going to show you really quickly, um, I'm going to go ahead and make one of these uh, little circuits that emulates uh, the car being connected. Uh, you got my Zener diode here and my uh, regular diode here. And I'm just going to put them back to back, so to speak. And I really like these uh, splice connectors. They have solder built into them um, and it's a heat shrink tubing so you can get everything all nice and buttoned up and electrically isolated and uh, a nice solder connection all in one in one shot so it's super nice so I'll go ahead and put those together all right so here I am um, got this thing installed again I've got the wiring all done um, inside and just to kind of try the switch out if I flip it on this should turn blue uh, which indicates that the charger, or the wall connector rather, um, thinks that there's a car uh, plugged into it. So let's see if that works. Good. So, just to kind of describe uh, exactly what you're going to see here, uh, I'm going to plug my non-Tesla car into the Tesla uh, wall connector. And what I think is going to happen is that... Um, or what I think is happening is that when I plug it in, uh, the car is going to uh, call for voltage. And uh, the wall connector is actually going to try to communicate with the car because it thinks it's a Tesla. Um, and the car is going to say, dude, where is my power? And it's going to flash red. Um, but it's going to only do that for about 10 seconds. And then the wall connector is going to give up and it's going to give it the power it asks for. So that's what you're going to see here. Um, and I've done this before, so I know it's going to do this. So I plug it in. Uh, the car says, hey, I want power. And it flashes red. Where's my power? Come on. And then you should hear the relay trip here in about a few seconds. And it'll start charging. There you go. So... The question I had was, what if I trick the uh, wall connector into thinking it's already plugged in, and then it will go through that 10-second process 
and it will actually give up early. Um, so that's why I installed that uh, that switch, uh, just to save that measly 10 seconds where the car is like, dude, where's my power? And the wall connector isn't giving it. So let's see if that works. Um, and it's locked, so I just need to unlock it here. So let's give this a shot. So I flip the switch. This guy says, hey, there's a car connected. Let's try to communicate with it. And it does, it tries, and hopefully it should give up. Um, but I don't know if it's giving up or not. It's just, I can see that it thinks the car's connected. So now my hope is that the uh, wall connector's already given up trying to communicate with the car. So when I plug it in, it will just, uh, no red light, boom. Perfect. So all that work for saving, you know, 10 seconds uh, of negotiation uh, by having the switch here. And the switch allows me to like deactivate it if I don't decide I don't wanna do this anymore. Um, but you know, hacking is fun in and of itself. Uh, so, and I learned something and I got pleasure out of knowing that like I could do it. So I hope this is useful to, to somebody out there um, someone who has an old charger that falls in their lap or maybe they uh, want to switch from a Tesla to some other EV as uh, a lot of new EVs are coming out in the next two or three years uh, and they can repurpose their chargers. So um, yeah, let me know if you find this useful. I'd be interested in seeing uh, what you come up with. Um, and again, you know, this is something you do at your own risk. There's always, you know, high, there's high voltages involved. Um, and you really want to make sure that you uh, isolate everything, you know, and protect it. You don't want bare wires inside there uh, ready to short out. So good luck and uh, have fun hacking. Hey guys, so one last thing I wanted to address because I know it'll come up if anyone watches this, this video. Um, I am aware of these, um, these converters. Uh, on this side, you know, there's the Tesla, and then on this side is the standard. Um, the reason why I went through the trouble is because, you know, who wants to have this big bulky thing hanging off your uh, home charging station all the time, um, in my opinion? But obviously, I mean, this is an option, if you don't mind that. Um, I bought this so I can have it in the car, and uh, I can plug it into a Tesla destination charger and uh, juice up while I'm on the road. Uh, if need be. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is a great option. Um, again, I hope you enjoy my video.